Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 6th of September. India will give befitting reply if attacked, says Indian Vice President. Afghan President Ghani says peace with Taliban meaningless. Nearly 300 people arrested in Sri Lanka in connection with Easter bombings. And now for all the details. India has been acting with restraint despite grave provocations. But if attacked, India will give a reply that the aggressor will be unable to forget. India's Vice President Venkaiya Naidu said on Friday in a veiled warning to Pakistan amid tensions over Kashmir issue. India's Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu, in a veiled warning to Pakistan on Friday, said that India has been acting with restraint despite grave provocations, but if attacked, will give a reply that the aggressor will be unable to forget. He made the remarks after launching a compilation of 95 speeches delivered by President Ramnath Kovin during his second year in office. His remarks come amid heightened tensions between India and Pakistan after the abrogation of Article 370 that gives special status to Jammu and Kashmir. India, in spite of grave provocations, we must be seeing in the recent past also, we are not doing anything. But if somebody attacks you, we will give a reply to them which they will not be able to forget for the rest of their life. This has to be understood by all. Meanwhile, a month after the abrogation of Article 370 by government on 5th of August, normalcy prevailed in the Kashmir Valley with restrictions removed in almost all areas during the daytime. Roads witnessed traffic and markets opened with armed troopers keeping a vigil in several parts of the valley. However, security forces are keeping their crushing campaign on to stamp out terrorism from the region. Meanwhile, Pakistan is leaving no chance to raise tensions and threaten war with India over Kashmir after failing to internationalize the issue. Pakistan's army chief on Friday vowed to give fullest possible response to India over Kashmir. Pakistan's chief of army staff, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, once again on Friday threatened war with India over Kashmir, vowing fullest possible response to India. The rhetoric on the annual Defence Day remembrance of Pakistan's fighters in a 1965 war with India underscores rising tension between the nuclear armed force after New Delhi last month revoked special status of its Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcated it into two union territories. Bajwa said Pakistan will keep fighting for the cause of Kashmiris till the last bullet and soldier. Pakistan ke bhadar awam afwaj apne Kashmiri बहन भाइयों के लिए हर तरह की कुर्बानी देने को तैयार हैं हम आखिरी गोली आखिरी सिपाही और आखिरी सांस तक अपना फर्ज अदा करेंगे और इसके लिए हम हर हद तक जाने को तैयार हैं Earlier this week Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan said both India and Pakistan are nuclear armed countries and if the tensions increase the world could be in danger Khan has led a vigorous international diplomatic campaign to internationalize the Kashmir issue. But India has categorically told the international community that the scrapping of special status of Jammu and Kashmir was an internal matter. Moving on. Residents in Gilgit, Baltistan have been experiencing significantly higher risks and worsened health outcomes due to inadequate staffing and infrastructure. Locals blame lack of negligence on the part of the authorities and puppet administration under Islamabad's control for crisis in health services. Health sector in Gilgit, Baltistan continues to function in shambles due to long-standing neglect by the puppet administration under Islamabad's control. The state's failure to adequately provide good services has left locals in distress and fend for themselves. 
Locals express that treatment options have greatly diminished in hospitals and patients are forced to leave for bigger cities like Karachi and Islamabad for treatment for which they have to spend huge amount of money. Residents experience significantly higher risks and worsened health outcomes due to inadequate staffing and infrastructure. Sir, in Gilgit, the situation of the health of the health is very bad. The basic reason is that there are a lot of hospitals in Gilgit. जदीद मिशनरी की कमी है अब जो आप गिलगित सिटी की आप करंट जो कंडीशन आप देखेंगे तो गिलगित सिटी की कंडीशन ये है कि वहाँ पे दो हॉस्पिटल बने हुए एक डी हॉस्पिटल बना हुआ है जो गवर्नमेंट का है एक कशरोड हॉस्पिटल बना हुआ है दोनों में कोई जदीद किस्म की मिशनरी नहीं है और टेक्नीशियन नहीं है The hygiene conditions are extremely dilapidated in the health facilities and there is a dire need for maintenance and operators even if machines have been installed Locals claim that the administration's failure to ensure affordable and accessible health care shows historic lack of care for Gilgit Baltistan that was forcefully captured by Pakistan more than seven decades ago. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani has condemned the car bombing in Kabul on Thursday, calling peace talks with the Taliban meaningless. The attack claimed by the Taliban killed at least 10 civilians. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Thursday said peace with the Taliban is meaningless and that the international community should not be silent towards the attacks by the militant group. The remark by the president came hours after a powerful car bombing by the Taliban in the country's capital, Kabul, killed at least 10 civilians. The attack was the second major attack in less than a week by the hardliner group that has already reached agreement in principle with the U.S. following nine months of talks in Qatar. The Afghan government and the Taliban are expected to hold the first direct peace talks in the near future in case the U.S. and the Taliban sign a draft framework agreement they wrapped following months of diplomacy in Doha. Last week, the U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad said that the United States and the Taliban have reached an agreement in principle, but it is not final until the U.S. President Donald Trump agrees on it. Since his appointment last year, Khalilzad has held nine rounds of talks with the Taliban. Moving on to news from Nepal. The number of dengue cases has shot up by double across Nepal in the last one week with the disease spreading rapidly in urban areas. In the latest, Nepal recorded 2,559 cases of the mosquito-borne disease till Wednesday. At least three people have been killed as a result of dengue in various parts of Nepal and the number of persons affected by the vector-borne disease has also doubled within a week. As per the Record of Epidemiology and the Disease Control Division or EDCD under the Department of Health, the number of infected with dengue were 1,537 till last Wednesday, but in a week it has doubled nearly by twofold, with the number standing at 2,559 on September 4. Tension and fear have gripped the Nepali capital Kathmandu with an increase in the number of dengue cases from 21 cases last week to nearly threefold hike with 70 cases this week. Citizens of Lagan took a sigh of relief on Thursday as disinfectants were spread in and around their locality. यो अब ये तो रोग फैल ही रहा है ना अस्तिन है अस्तिन ही गर्नो पर नहीं होया खास करी एकदम चिला वैसे के पश्चिम मानसे यारों ठेरे ऊ वैसे के पश्चिम गरे नहीं ते वेरा ये एकदम ऊ बाय नहीं है ना ये सुर सुर में ये ती गर्दी ना बागो बाया था ये तो बिरामी होनी थी ना वाला सायद है ना अब य तो पहले एकदम ही ठीलो भागो भाई रहा ये इस तो भागो न तो ये तो बिराम तो उन्होंने ठेन वाला साइड। The Kathmandu metropolitan city, with the help of Korean organization, has started spraying disinfectant, especially in alleys and all residential areas of Kathmandu, where the drainage system is always a serious problem. Dengue is a mosquito-borne viral infection causing a severe flu-like illness. The symptoms of dengue are high fever, severe headache. Pain behind eyes, pain in muscles and bones, rashes and back pain. In news from Sri Lanka, nearly 300 people have been arrested in connection with the deadly Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka, the police said on Thursday. Nine suicide bombers carried out the series of blasts at three churches and high-end hotels, killing at least 250 people in the country. 
Sri Lankan police on Thursday said they have arrested 293 suspects so far in connection with the Easter Sunday bombings that killed 258 people this year in the country. Out of the 293 persons arrested in connection with the attacks, 115 suspects have been remanded after investigations were completed, local media reported. The other 178 suspects were being detained and questioned on detention orders till the last reports came in. Nine suicide bombers carried out a series of suicide attacks on April 21 on churches and luxury hotels when the Christian community in the country was celebrating Easter Sunday. Later, the Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attacks, but the Lankan government has blamed local Islamist extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat for the bombings. A women empowerment center run by the Indian Army in Budgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir is helping Kashmiri women to become self-dependent by learning to stitch traditional Kashmiri clothes. Besides ensuring security in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian Army has taken up various schemes under the Ministry of Defence to help empower Kashmiri women in the far-flung areas. A women empowerment center run by the army in Badgam district is helping Kashmiri women to learn tailored traditional Kashmiri clothes. The center helps girls and women trainees to avail the facility of sewing machines and produce finished stitched materials. मैंने यहाँ पे सूट शॉल, फेरन, काफ्तान, सेमी पेशमीने के स्टोल शॉल, फेरन ये सब बनाना सीखा है। हम इन पे आरी वर्क का काम करते हैं और यहाँ से हमें बहुत फायदा मिला है। हमने यहाँ पे अपनी पहचान बना ली है। एक तो हम अपना खर्चा उठाते हैं और ऊपर से अपने घर का भी थोड़ा सा खर्चा इसे चलता है। मैं एक बहुत कुछ उन पैसों के लिए कुछ करती हूँ पाप आधा पापा को देती हूँ आधा अपने पास रख जो जो मुझे कुछ खरीदना है मैं इन्हीं पैसों से खरीदती हूँ मुझे यहाँ पे बहुत अच्छा लगता है ये सेंटर हमारे लिए कितना मायने रखता है वो हम लोग ही जानते हैं कितना मायने रखता है हमारे लिए The center aims to enhance skills of the women to make them self-dependent and to facilitate their employment in various industries. The Indian Army runs various vocational training centers and women empowerment centers. spread across Jammu and Kashmir to provide practical skills to interested and deserving candidates. In memory of fountain pen era, a man in southern India has created a 19 feet long replica of a wooden fountain pen. The hefty model of the stationery weighs over 551 pound and has attracted a lot of attention since the time it was put on a display. Reminiscing the era of fountain pens, a carpenter from India's southern Shivmoga city has created a 19 feet long replica of a wooden fountain pen. Krishnamurthy Acharya created the replica of the stationery, which weighs over 551 pounds and is kept in the middle of woods for display. Acharya, who has a passion for wooden pens, said he has been interested in fountain ink pens and created the replica in memory of fountain pens as the classic pens have almost disappeared. Acharya has now applied for Guinness World Records after his unique creation and is awaiting a response. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India will give befitting reply if attacked, says Indian Vice President. Afghan President Ghani says peace with Taliban meaningless. Nearly 300 people arrested in Sri Lanka in connection with Easter bombings. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.